Good evening, and welcome to the Channel 54 News at 10. I'm Jed Ranjero. And I'm Winona Deerhorn. Our top story tonight, soldiers in Afghanistan are facing a lot of unforeseen issues when taking inventory of weapons and supplies. Live from Afghanistan, Private Stephen Parts provides reasoning for the inventory taking difficulties. You know, it's, uh, it's impossible to take inventory while the Taliban is in place. In other news, local parents felt that their child's teacher crossed the line when they were told that their 8-year-old son, Andy Whistler, could have autism. Whistler's mother was quoted as saying, Nothing's wrong with Andy. He would just rather be painting than doing math. Whistler's mother promptly had young Andy put in another classroom, where he is apparently much happier. And later, we will check in with local zookeepers who have no idea how to get a bipolar bear to mate. But first, we have a special segment where we dive into the very depths of a psychological disorder known as Intermittent Explosive Disorder, or IED for short. IED, huh? What does that entail, Winona? I'm glad you asked, Chet. The American Psychological Association's Diagnostic and Statistical Manual describes IED as the occurrence of discrete episodes of failure to resist aggressive impulses that result in violence, assault, or destruction of property. The degree of aggressiveness expressed during an episode is also grossly disproportionate to provocation or precipitating psychosocial stressors. The DSM goes on to state that diagnosis is made when other mental disorders that may cause violent outbursts have been ruled out. And furthermore, the actual aggression must not be due to a general medical condition, a substance abuse problem, or a medication. You know, I know that description really caught my attention. I am vaguely reminded of the motivational speaker that was brought into our studio just a couple weeks ago. Well, Chet, it seems to have caught the attention of our producers as well. Having Matt Foley speak to our staff in the past really brought about questions in regards to his normality. That is why I sat down with a few people closest to Mr. Foley and asked the hard-hitting questions we all want answers to. Let's take a look. Welcome to the show, Mrs. Foley. I'm glad to be here, why now that no, I'm a big fan. Thank you. Um, Mrs. Foley, as a mother, you have undoubtedly seen him at his best and his worst. Is that safe to assume? Oh, heavens, yes. Hmm. Growing up, was Matt ever quick to fight others or destructive toward any property? You know, looking back at it, I can't think of many instances when Matthew wasn't in trouble for breaking things and fighting with people. You know, as a child, we couldn't even go more than a week without having to get a new coffee table. That sounds very intense. The first symptom of IED is several episodes of impulsive behavior that result in serious damage to either persons or property. We're going to be buddies! We're going to be pals! We're going to wrestle around! <laughs> Old Matt's going to be your shadow! Here's you, here's Matt! There's you, there's... By God. We're going to have to clean that up later. You're driving along, you're driving along, and all of a sudden the kids are yelling from the back seat, I gotta go to the bathroom, Daddy. Not now, damn it. Truck tire. I can't stop. Oh, help. There's a cliff. Oh, and your family's screaming, Oh my God, we're burning alive. No, I can't feel my legs. In comes a meat wagon. Wee -oo, wee -oo, wee -oo. And the medic gets out and says, Oh my God. New guy's in the corner puking his guts out. Welcome to the show, Mr. Foley. Glad to be here, Winona. Randy, I'm in the TV. Hey. Hey, Mr. Foley, please, let me ask you a question about your okay. son. Um, was your son ever overly aggressive or hostile beyond reason in relation to the circumstances that triggered his anger? Who, Matt? Hell, Matt was always, well, he was madder than a wet hen at an omelet scramble. Oh. And you know, he wasn't never justified for it, neither. The second symptom of IED is the degree of the aggressiveness is grossly disproportionate to the circumstances or provocation. My name is Matt Foley. And I am a motivational speaker. 
Now, you kids are probably saying to yourselves, hey, I'm going to go out and I'm going to get the world by the tail and wrap it around and pull it down and put it in my pocket. Well, I'm here to tell you that you're probably going to find out as you go out there that you're not going to amount to jack squat. And he was living in a van down by the river. Actually, Matt, I kind of want to be a writer. Well, la de frickin' da! We got ourselves a writer here! Hey, Dad, I can't see real good. Is that Bill Shakespeare over there? Huh? Well, actually, Matt, uh, Ellen and I have encouraged Brian in his writing. Dad, I wish you could just shut your big yapper! But they love you for it. Hey, do you? Welcome to the show, Dr. Onions. The name is Onions. My apologies, Dr. Onions. Is it your expert opinion that Mr. Foley was normal despite his aggression issues? You know, I have logged a vast number of hours with Mr. Foley. And I've determined that the only reason for his anger and aggression is a diagnosis of intermittent explosive disorder. The third and final symptom of IED is the episodic violence cannot be better accounted for by another mental or physical medical condition. Interesting, Mr. Foley. Okay, what I want to do here, I have uh, this Rorschach test. I just want you to uh, tell me what you see. You know, Doug, it looks like Shy from the Dynasty. Okay, interesting stuff. You know, I don't think there's any doubt that Matt Foley has IED. Absolutely, Chet, but there are some treatment options. Treatments are generally conducted with medications or cognitive therapy. Medications include tricyclic antidepressants, serotonin reuptake inhibitors, mood stabilizers, and anticonvulsive medicines. The mood stabilizers and anticonvulsive drugs help with outbursts. Anxiolytics help alleviate tension and can help reduce explosive outbursts. These drugs are especially indicated in patients with comorbid obsessive compulsive or other anxiety disorders. Tranquilizers can also be used to suppress psychotic impulses, but they can make the disability worse. On very rare occasions, heart regulating medication is also used. Unfortunately, Chet, medications are not as successful as they had originally hoped to be. However, therapy is. Therapies include counseling and psychotherapy. Counseling helps with thought patterns and behaviors and helps to recognize the onsets of the IED impulses. Psychotherapy is more like a 12-step program and is a group session surrounded by peers or family. No matter the treatment, tests are conducted to determine the best course of action. Tests include questionnaires and physical examinations. PET scanning can also take place, which can determine if one's glucose levels are off. There has also been a correlation seen between the amount of waveforms within a child's brain and the exhibition of IED symptoms. Also, Chet, I found this interesting. IED could possibly be associated with lesions in the prefrontal cortex. Ah, well that's not very surprising, why don't I? Because typically, damage to these areas, including the amygdala, can increase the incidence of impulsive and aggressive behavior, while also making individuals unable to predict the outcomes of their own actions. You know, Chet, lesions in these areas are also associated with improper blood sugar control, which also leads to decreased brain functions in these areas. This can create real problems as these areas are associated with planning and decision making. Mmm, interesting stuff. All right, when we get back, a blind woman receives a kidney transplant from a brother she hasn't seen in years. <laughs> <laughs> 